Hi everyone, I'm Giselle Aguillard, AZ Social Media Wiz, and I've been doing internet marketing since 1995. Before that, I spent many years in retailing, sales, and traditional marketing and advertising. Competition, like it or not, when it comes to marketing, you're always competing with someone for the valuable dollar in your target market's pocket. You may be blessed to have little or even no direct competition, but what else are you competing against? Well, moreover, you can be in a highly competitive field or industry. At any rate, you still need to stand out above the crowd. And there are various ways to do that in today's digital marketing age. So I'll be highlighting some of them here. First and foremost, you wanna be found when someone is searching for what you have to offer. The question is, who are you up against? Who else comes up in Google search for your major keywords? And Google still owns search. So Google, Google has almost 93% of all global search. And Google's goal is to give the searcher exactly what they're searching for. Google wants fresh, relevant, quality content written for the human reader in natural language. And that gives you search engine optimization. And search has also gotten smarter now with the um, artificial intelligence. It's, it's really creepy, but it's, it's there. So it, it tries to figure out the context and intent that's behind a search term, or it tries to. So that's why you see people also searched for. It's anticipating what you may be interested in. So know your competition. So before you start publishing or posting anything, you need to do a little research on your competition. Where do they come up in Google search compared to you for your major keywords or phrases? And one thing you need to understand now that Google search has changed. Okay, so now they've got um, what's called continuous scroll and it's now live also on desktop. I noticed it the other day on my Google Chrome. Um, it's, it's a relatively new feature, both on mobile search results and now on desktop. Um, continuous scroll on search results page. So no more load more resu uh, results. Um, you'll see you'll see it designate second page sort of, but you're still you you're you're keep scrolling, so you really don't go to a second page. It doesn't load a second page. Um, so there's really no more first page. So now what you got to look at is who's got the top five organic spots. Um, so um, if you're so, so basically, if you've been, if you've had a website for a while, so okay, where are you are you coming up with some searches for your main keywords or phrases? Not your company name. Okay, your goal is to improve that position. If you're brand new, you've got some work to do. Um, okay, so are you in a highly competitive industry? Right. For instance, I did a simple search for Realtor Phoenix and got over twenty five million results. So real estate is a highly competitive industry. So is health and wellness, financial, um, uh, and financial breaks down to planners, uh, tax preparers, accountants, bookkeepers, insurance, and anything e-commerce. Okay, um, and then also travel industry and you know automotive is highly. I used to sell cars. Highly competitive industry um, at whatever level you are. Um, you know so so. Um, it's, so it's really, you really have to take a look at what everyone is doing. Um, and be aware too that you're not just competing against your direct competition, you're competing for your target audience's attention among an overwhelming amount of content out there. There is a lot of noise. So you need to stand out among the crowd, which brings us to what makes you unique. So what's your unique selling proposition, your USP? Okay, this is, this is really important. This is where you really need to start when you're looking at your business. So what makes you different from everyone else? Now, the searcher is thinking, how can you help me? What's in it for me? Can you alleviate my pain point? Can, do you have a solution to my problem? Okay, I'm looking for this, this, and this. Where can I find it? I need this. I want this. Mm. So let's review the different types of competition that you can have out there. So low to no competition. So first I'll tell you about one of my clients who opened the very first rage room in Tempe, Arizona. In fact, it wasn't the first one in the whole state of Arizona. <laughs> so being the first, he has no competition. 
He enjoyed being on the first page of Google search for Rage Room Phoenix or Anger Room Tempe, among other phrases, even if the searcher didn't know the name of the company. He was found by searching for what it is. Most importantly, that's one of the first things to remember when it comes to search engine optimization. What is your target market going to enter into the search box to find what you are offering? if they don't know your name, okay? And I'll let that question sink in a little bit. Okay. And I remember I did, um, um, I met with a, a, a gal who had a yoga studio in Tempe. And um, the studio itself was named um, after her and she was Middle Eastern and she had a foreign last name. Now, nothing against foreign last names. I have a foreign last name and no one can ever spell my name right. All right. I mean, it's all my life. It's been that way. So that's the problem. Um, plus, even more common names can be spelled in different ways, too. So so um, you so the people usually don't remember the, the actual name of the business. And then they're, unless they're a returning customer or they have your, they have their your business card in their hand or something, you know, or, or direct recommendation. So they're going to search for what they need. So back to Simply Smashing. So for, for almost two years, my client, my client enjoyed being the only one in the, in the Phoenix Valley till another rage room opened nearby in the East Valley. So it was, it was basically about maybe 10, 15 miles from where he was. Now there's also one in North Phoenix, and I'm sure there's more others that I'm not aware of. So my client can't afford to become complacent. Above all, he has to continue um, uh, his marketing efforts, or he's going to lose a coveted first page of Google. All right, so then you've got low but formidable. So another client of mine, Europay, and their cyber advantage plan has only one competitor for this aspect of his business. However, they are a formidable one. They publish an article at least five times a week, yep, daily. Okay? They're a larger organization and they have a staff. So the challenge here will not be to bump them off or down, but to at least come up on the same level. He's in an industry with daily breaking news on cyber hacking and you know, this data breach or whatever. And so um, if they highlight a news story a day, run on that story's coattails by creating a blog post and saying, if you have our cyber insurance, you'll have peace of mind when, not if, you are a victim of cyber crime, as you notice, the, the tagline that I came up for them is uh, your, your safety net for when you get hit by cybercrime, because it's when, not if someone's going to someone's going to hack into your life. Um, uh, okay, then medium competition. So another one of my clients is my chiropractor. Specifically, he's a Gonstead chiropractor, and that's a particular method of chiropractic medicine. Some people search for that, and there are only a few in the Phoenix Valley. On top of that, he also practices holistic and functional medicine, which um, tries to find the source of the pain or issue rather than treating the symptom. Besides that, he offers several weight loss programs. And now with that, he has a lot of competition. So he told me he liked working with older people, helping them with healthy aging. So that gave me the idea for him to offer a health, healthy aging screening, which would get folks into the office. Then he, depending on their medical problem, offers various treatments that helped him stand out and reach a specific target. We focused on sharing articles on healthy aging, and we built a following with that strategy. Then you've got high competition. Okay, so recently I picked up this client. Um, lean lifestyle, and I was doing research for him. Now he has local healthy meal delivery service. And I knew that was a competitive field going in, but I didn't realize how competitive until I started doing research. And all of a sudden on my personal Instagram, I start seeing ads for healthy meal delivery near me. Every day a new one would pop up. I mean, that was amazing. So I first listed for him like the top eight that came up on Google search. And then I found three more significant ones from the Instagram ads. If he wants to be successful, he's going to have to budget some dollars for paid ads. Okay, there were some who weren't blogging enough or at all, and others didn't post that often on social media. So as soon as he starts blogging, at least weekly, in fact, um, if you haven't been blogging, I recommend blogging at least three to five times 
a week for the first two weeks. Just throw content out there. And I'm doing that strategy with, with another, another client that's in health and wellness right now. Um, so we need to put out at least one a day for the next two weeks so that Google recognizes it's, and in fact, she has a brand new website. So then we'll go down to two to three a week and then, and then we'll just keep it going to one a week. And that should keep feeding Google the, the, you know, the, the fresh content that it, that it wants. Um, but the idea is that he needs to, uh, he needs to bump, um, bump himself up at least a couple of spaces. I'll show you in a minute where, where they are. <clears throat> so what if you're up against some of the big guys? So if you search for any health symptoms, you'll get WebMD. Search for any specific product and up comes Amazon. Okay, well, guess what? You'll never be able to get above them because they've got agreements with Google and they're not paid ads. So look for the top organic spots. So the difference between paid and organic. So paid advertising is Google ads, okay, which work by pay-per-click. So the way that works is you set your budget and select your audience. Then each time someone clicks on your ad, the per click price is deducted from your budget. And that price will vary with where you're advertising and how much competition there is for your keywords and audience. Um, so, and then social media paid advertising works in the same way, pay-per-click. And there's also ads on sites, your target frequents. So this one is gonna be obviously more targeted because let's say you're, you're, you're in a local blog. Um, uh, so you want, you, you want to advertise there, but you want to make sure that, um, you know, what, how many people are seeing their, um, their blog, how many visitors do they have and so forth. So they got to show you their analytics and that kind of thing. You're doing ads directly in, um, in an online magazine or an online blog. Okay. So organic is basically non-paid. So here was is where you have your content marketing, which are your blogs, videos, podcasts, images. Uh, organic search engine optimization, and then actively posting on social media. Okay, so um, these are the top top organic spots. So I did a search for healthy meal delivery Phoenix AZ. Okay, so you want to when you do uh, a search on Google for your your keywords, um, and I always try to use the incognito window because then it doesn't pull it doesn't take into consideration everything you've searched in the past. Um, uh, so it's like a, a clean search. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not tracking your search and you'll see stuff and I'll see stuff on my Instagram <laughs> later on because that's just the way it works these days. So you want to scroll down past the paid ads and past the map. Um, and there are the top organic spots. Okay. So where are you? Okay. in in there, like how, hopefully you don't have to go that far down. Okay. If you're a brand new website, you don't have any SEO, don't even bother finding, trying to look for yourself because you're not going to come up. Um, uh, but, uh, for, if you, if your web once your website's been there for a while, you want to keep, you want to track, you know, like after, you know, when, once you start actively posting and blogging and, and doing your marketing online, um, you're going to want to track where you, where you are in this. And this is something you do basically at the, at the end of every month to see to see where you are if this is a fa if, if obviously if competition is a factor so count the spots so who is just above you and check them out how often are they blogging what are their offers what are their calls to action and what makes you different okay and so even if you're a new website you need to do this research too so you put in your keywords in there and then see who comes up Okay, and same thing. How often are they blogging? What are their offers? What are their calls to action? And what makes you different? Now, you'll see that um, my client, Lean Lifestyle, came in in spot number seven. Okay, not bad because he's been, no, he's been, he hired somebody to do SEO for them. And notice that Yelp is right above him. Now, there's not much you can do about that except to make sure you are on there and people are reviewing too. And not all businesses need to be on Yelp. Okay, the next one up is Fresh and Lean and they're one of the big guys. And um, we'll look at um, how to deal with that in a minute. Okay, so here's what you're looking for on their websites. So um, do they have a blog? How often are they blogging? What are they blogging about? 
Okay, what's their call to action? How are they getting people to either buy or convert? Or you want to convert a visitor into a lead or a sale? That's the objective of the website. Boom, excuse me. <clears throat> okay, is their website easy to navigate? Okay, is their branding consistent? We'll talk about branding in a little bit. Do they have social media icons connected to their accounts? And again, what makes you different? Okay, look at their social media. Okay, how often are they posting? How often are they doing videos? How active are they on social media? Organic posting or paid ads? Okay, then you want to look at the hashtags. Um, well, what hashtags do they use? Okay, what generic relevant hashtags are they using? Okay, don't use their brand ones. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. And again, I go, what makes you different? So daily posting on social media is, a tent, is essential to beat the competition. Um, so like here's Fresh and Lean. This is an Instagram post. Now, in my honest opinion, they're not effectively using the space. You get 2,200 characters and you can put up to 30 hashtags on Instagram. So notice this um, and their hashtags, one of them is hashtag fresh and lean, which they use consistently as a brand. Okay, so you wanna, you, you wanna create your brand hashtag, use your brand hashtag, and then, um, and then use them consistently. Now, I, I recently did a webinar on hashtags, so that has all the, um, uh, all the tips and tricks on how to use them. But then there, there are generic ones in this particular post are hashtag meal prep and hashtag meal delivery. Okay, I've also seen fresh not frozen. You know, so um, so the ones, you know, obviously for, for my client, we wanna use those last two in there. So I, I actually went through several of Fresh and Lean's posts to see which ones they're, um, uh, they're using. And so I told them, okay, these are the hashtags you need to use consistently every time, okay. you know, so. Um, all right, so, but before you start doing anything, who's your target market, okay? Clearly define your target audience and you want to niche. Okay, so, you know, anyone who wears clothing, okay, well, that's too much. <laughs> All right, you want to narrow it down. All right, um, anyone who drives a car, okay, you want to narrow it down. <laughs> so, without this stuff, you can't know which competitors are going after the same target market as you. So, B to C, um, your, your, your business to consumer. So your main customer is the average consumer who would buy your products or hire your services. And you can have more than one persona. Okay, what are their interests, desires, wants, and needs? What are their pain points? Okay, you can reach them on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And you should have a presence on LinkedIn for credibility. Okay, B2B. Are you business to business? Your main targets are other businesses, but you still have to deal with people in the business. So who's the decision maker? And you want to think of some business to business also as referral sources. Okay, I know when I was selling cars, I had some, even though I wasn't working in the commercial section of the dealership, every so often I would get um, um, a customer who would want it, who want a commercial, ve uh, commercial vehicle, uh, or they wanted a, um, um several cars for a fleet you know so um so sometimes you know you're um you know so and you could be working like danielle you could be working with a church who want um all this for a special event so that that could be a business to business client for you um so um the who's the decision maker in the company um what's their size location goals objectives what's their main service or product most important, what is their problem or pain point that you're going to solve? Are you going to make their lives easier, more productive, or successful? And as for social media, you want to focus on LinkedIn and Twitter with Facebook as a secondary network to do targeted paid ads. And again, are you both? So if you're both, you want to determine what percentage is business to consumer or business to business. And um, uh, and then balance out your, your strategies and tactical, uh, efforts between the two that way. Um, you want to create personas of your perfect customer. 
And then once you've defined your target, you need to learn as much as you can about them. So which social networks do they frequent the most? Okay, the networks evolve. What devices do they prefer? Who do they follow? What are their buying habits? Uh, what are their pain points? How can you solve their problem? How can you alleviate their pain point? Who do they trust? What, again, what makes you different? Um, uh, take a look at demographic and geographic data. Okay, get the most recent data. That's the other thing. There's a lot of data out there. There's a lot of statistics, a lot of figures out there. So you want the most recent data. Um, and now this is fun. I, I think this is fun. So you can follow your competition, your competitors. You can keep up with what they're doing online without them knowing it. Yeah, you're going to be spying on that. So here's a few ways. And then afterwards, I'll go live and I'll demonstrate you how to do it in each of the networks. So first is Feedly, okay? This is, you subscribe to their blog. This is a free e-news reader. And you can subscribe to their blogs without them knowing or having to get their emails, okay? Then uh, create a private list on Twitter and use TweetDeck to mo monitor it. TweetDeck is a, a free tool by Twitter for Twitter. And again, I'll show you how to use that. And you can see how often they post as well as what they're posting. You can copy some of their ideas hashtags. Um, on your Facebook business page, you can follow other pages and it's in the meta business suite. And I'll go show you how, um, how that works. And also the same on LinkedIn. So you can follow businesses on LinkedIn also, what they're doing, how much they're posting, how they're growing and so forth. Um, then you also have, you know, the competition for your target's attention as a whole. So back in the day, I remember when I was younger, there were only three TV networks. And then you had either a morning or maybe an evening newspaper. The bolder the headline and the snazzier the commercial got your attention. So a business tested ads with coupons to see if they were effective. They looked for ROI or return on investment. And I have an article on, on um, you'll get the PDF of the slides and the, there's an article on on how to measure your success. So return on investment is simply, um, if you placed an ad in a newspaper, let's say, for and you spent $100 on it, and you got, um, and you made $500 out of, off of those sales, so your return on investment is $400. Okay, so I mean, that's a simple way of putting it. But the problem is, is with digital marketing, it's really hard to measure this. Um, on the paid advertising, it's easier to do it, but not on the organic one, because somebody will say, when you ask them, well, how did you hear about us? And this, well, I saw you online. And I'm like, uh, can you be more specific? Probably not, because they'll forget exactly where they found you. You know, so, um, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's harder that way. So that the, art, the article I have explains, you want um, a key performance indicators, which are um, like, for instance, you want conversions. So, and, and then the time, you, get a, you gotta focus on, also put the time that you're spending on social media. If you're hiring somebody to do your social media for you, that's part of the investment you're making in there. But so, so it's really hard to say, well, I've spent this much money and this is what I got in return. It's really hard to do that with digital marketing. Um, so you're not just competing against your business competition. Additionally, you're up against everyone else that your target follows online and on social media, which includes and is not limited to family, friends, celebrities, entertainment, news, friends, politics, and the major brands. All right, so now we're gonna talk about different strategies, what you, what you can do here. So the recipe for success, and this is a formula or a recipe for success, and it starts with content, a blog, videos, podcast, or gallery providing the fresh material that Google is looking for. You wanna become a content magnet. People won't follow you unless you're posting content. So you, you post that content on social media <clears throat> and engage with your potential customer. Um, and that's the formula. Content plus social media gives you search engine optimization or traffic to your website. Given that, you must have a website that's set up to capture leads or direct the people to sale. So you wanna convert a visitor into a lead or a sale with an enticing offer then have them in some sort of email automation system to nurture them into a sale. So without content and social media, you won't get that traffic to your website. 
with no traffic to your website, you won't get conversions. And if you skip any part of this, your efforts won't work. Just like if you leave out an essential ingredient of a recipe, it won't taste good. So how often should you post? So um, first of all, you want to see how often are your competitors posting? Okay. And again, you're gonna, sometimes you're going to find somebody that has a staff. Okay, so the staff, the, the staff is working and posting. So you, go, you have to take that into consideration. You know, how big it, you know, is, your, is your competitor and, and, how, and how often it, you know, um, they're, they're posting and creating the content. Because it's not just, you know, scheduling and posting. You've got to create the content, too. So for, for posting frequency, this is like the, the 10 for one guideline. Okay, this is a rule of thumb. You don't have to absolutely follow this, but this is just a guideline. So out of every 15 posts, 10 should be other people's relevant content. Okay, this, um, and this could be other, uh, other people's related and, you know, related uh, in your industry. Um, uh, you know, good ideas, you know, any, you know, any, anything, anything that's relevant to your industry that would be of interest to your target audience, but obviously not a, com not, not a competitor. Okay. And then four, four out of 15 should be your original content. Now, obviously you can fudge this a little bit. You can post, you know, your original content more often. And this can be again, blog posts, videos, uh, graphics, uh, motivational posts, inspirational graphics, things like that. And then one out of 15, or at least one out of 10, is a promotional post, okay? This is the one that buy or try or download this free offer or um, whatever your, your, your promotion or call to action is for, for the time. The idea being is it's not about you, you know, all you, okay? It's about sharing, not selling, okay? So... Um, and then sharing from your website also helps with, with SEO, okay? Um, so uh, now, what type of content? So decide what you're good at and what type of content you're capable of creating. So if you're going to blog, you have to be a fairly decent writer. Now, many local public libraries and, and online uh, universities and stuff offer free writing classes. So blog articles should be between 250 to 500 words. Um, and you know, should tell a story. It's basically how long, how long does it take you to tell a story? Um, video. Um, it's easy with the cameras and mobile devices and laptops, and you will want to invest in a tripod, right? So you can, you know, you can do, um, uh, I mean, there's so many different types of videos that, that, you know, that you can, that you can do, um, yeah, you know, and then just, you know, just be creative on there. Then there's podcasting, and you don't need fancy equipment. If you can talk, you can podcast. Um, then static graphics and pictures. Okay, create original relevant content, not clickbait. And you can use a free graphics tool, canva.com, to create images, even animations. Um, and I did a content marketing webinar not too long ago, and uh, the link is in there. You can go to my YouTube channel. Okay. Animations, okay, so this is part of, instead of static graphics, you can make them animated, okay? Anything that moves catches people's attention. So these are some I did for um, my health and wellness client. Um, and so, um, you know, and the idea, like it wasn't, wasn't major. These were, uh, these were uh, from templates from Canva. Canva's free to a point, but their pro version is very affordable. Um, but the idea is, as we see this, on you know on your social media posts they move you know there's there's motion in there so the animations and people catch um uh you know uh, people see them people will stop to look at the animation um then there's user generated content so this is encourage your happy camper customers to share their pictures using your product or service okay so when the box comes Oh, look, all right. Oh, I just got my box. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, let me see what I got. Oh, look. And then they'll videotape the whole thing, all right? You know, so, um, uh, and, and uh, in fact, with cars, it's the same thing. People buy cars and they're, they're like, oh, look, my car, I got a new car. Oh, you know, so everybody's excited. Make sure that in the thank you email, uh, give them your username and hashtag so that they mention your business, okay? So, um, when they post the pictures to, to their um, Instagram or Facebook accounts or Twitter or you know wherever, wherever they are, um, 
Right. And then for local brick and mortar businesses. Okay. So uh, offer to take a picture or video of them on their phone. Ask them to tag the location. For instance, this is a venue. It's actually across the street from my house. And so this user tagged the venue, the location um, uh, when they took this picture. Okay. So, so, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's one of the, that's one of the things. <clears throat> so keep in mind that all the content you produce is part of your brand image. So make sure you put out good quality content. So with blogging, proofread it. If you can't have somebody else proofread it, read it aloud to yourself. Bad grammar and spelling errors actually hurt your SEO ranking. Google is that picky. Videos and graphics can never be fuzzy. Okay, don't settle for just, okay, this is not a place to be lazy. And I have our, my brand new webinar that I did. I've got the link for it in there. Okay, crafting your message. Okay, so now you know who you're trying to reach. You have to craft the message. So these tips will help no matter what type of content you're creating. So again, you want to catch your target's eye. So grab their attention with an enticing headline. And I use a tool called Co-Schedule Headline Analyzer, which helps you find the right words, whether you're doing it for a blog article or, um, or an advertisement or a post. Um, and um, when you do keyword research, this is also a place for you to get ideas of what people are searching for and write about those topics, okay? Um, then keep their attention. The first paragraph in a blog or the first 15 seconds in a video or podcast needs to keep the attention of the reader, viewer, or listener. Um, outline the benefits. What are they going to learn or enjoy if they consume the whole piece? So uh, how are you going to solve their problem? Deliver on the headline. So nothing is worse than clickbait. You click on a heading and it's not what you expect. That hurts you in every way possible. People leave immediately um, and affect, you know, that affects your SEO. They'll never trust one of your posts again. They'll stop following you. They'll make a mental note of your name and brand and you'll lose them for good. Um, offer advice, tell a story, answer a question. Talk to your, um, your, your target audience. Remember, you're the expert. Your target probably isn't unless you're in the tech industry. Provide the knowledge that your audience wants or needs. Um, share, don't sell. I mentioned this before. Okay. You've got their attention, but don't sound too salesy. Okay. Do what, you know, what do you want them to do next? So here's what that enticing offer comes in. That's your call to action at the end of your blog, your video, or your podcast. You've got their attention. What do you want them to do next? Um, you want to optimize everything for search. That means all of your social media, um, profiles. Okay, so each of the networks has its own internal search engine that, re that rivals Google. And it's important you fill out all your about sections, your bios, et cetera, with keyword-centric descriptions on what you have to offer. Avoid flowery language, okay? Avoid, you know, the adjectives and everything. So you want to make sure you got those keywords in there. Um, and when you do your bios on Twitter and Pinterest and even Instagram, you only get 160 characters. Facebook gives you a lot of space, as does LinkedIn and YouTube. Okay, so take advantage of it. And then each of the networks offers analytics and insights so you can see who your followers are, which posts got the most engagement, likes, shares, or comments. On Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, you need at least 100 followers. And I've been noticed, Danielle, that you were at like 97 Instagram followers. So you need like three more followers <laughs> to start getting insights on your, on your followers there. So check your analytics once a month and adjust your marketing plan accordingly. And speaking of your marketing plan, that's what you want to do. You want to write out a strategic plan. Without a plan, you will be overwhelmed. So you want to start with SMART goals on what you want to accomplish with your content marketing. So an example of SMART goals is like 500 new visitors to the website in the next 30 days. Or uh, it could be 100 conversions or, or 100 new people on the email list. Okay, so do them month to month. Um, they're easier to handle that way. What are your objectives to drive traffic to your website? Lead generation. Grow your email list with quality leads. Grow your social media following. And this may be a goal if you're just starting out. So you want to get to that 100 benchmark. And then it should, um, your, your, as you keep posting your, your social media, should be growing um, consistently. Each month you should see growth consistently. 
The strategic plan is how are you going to accomplish those goals, which is basically your to-do list. So include data from your research. Based on your research, how often do you need to blog? Again, how often are your competitors blogging? If they're only blogging once a month, and as soon as you start blogging daily for at least one week, you're gonna you're gonna bump yourself above them in that organic search results for those for those keywords in there. Okay, so so how often you do stuff is really gonna depend on your competition in there. That's that's why I'm doing this webinar because people usually don't think about that. Um, um, you know, and they're they're trying, they're trying, and they're still not getting above these people because they're not blogging enough. They're not monitoring them. Um, <clears throat> So, and then how often you could record a video or a podcast. Now, again, it depends on how good you are. If you're a good writer, then blog. If you're a good talker and you want to do videos, videos, like for me personally, I prefer to write than to do videos. Um, you know, or I can, I, I, since I'm B2B, I like, uh, um, in fact, I think I'm probably going to be doing more um, video voiceovers than these live webinars. Um, so I think it'll be easier and to just post them to YouTube and they'll get actually more visibility that way. Um, you know, so again, the tactical plan is how are you going to implement the strategy? The strategy is how are you going to meet your goals? And the tactical plan is how are you going to implement the strategy? And what you're going to do when? Schedule them out. Don't post erratically on social media. Again, you can't. So you want, you want to, again, watch what your competition is doing. Get organized from your research. You'll know when and how often your competition is posting. So if, if they usually post every morning at nine o'clock, okay, you start posting every morning at eight o'clock or 8.30. And using and, and you can see this when, when you, when, when I'll show you how you can see this, you know, so you can see when they're posting. And then use the same generic hashtags, again, the generic ones, not their branded ones. Not even you say, well, I'm better than this, or I mean, that's not good. I mean, people do it, but don't do it. That's just bad. Um, um, and, and just so you know, you can't uh, trademark hashtags. You can't, you, know, you, can't, you can't trademark hashtag Coca-Cola. They tried and you can't do it. All right, but well, your analytics and insight will tell you when the op optimum time to post each, each for each network. So based on your following. Okay, there are several free tools. I like Sendable. It's free to a point. Um, you can actually try it for a couple of weeks. Um, um, again, tweet deck, and I'll show you how that works. Um, schedule posts to all your social accounts in one place. And again, monitor, respond to comments and queries within a reasonable amount of time. People who message you on social media, expect a response in a few hours, if not faster. Watch and respond quickly to bad reviews. You can use a tool like Sendable to monitor all your social accounts in one place. So let's review what you need to do. So first, define your target market's persona, research your target market and competitors. Okay, set your SMART goals, develop your strategic and tactical plans, set up your website, social media, and optimize everything for SEO. Set up your email marketing automation, learn how to properly use the tools, create and curate content. So curating content means you're looking for um, trusted um, sources of, of relevant content or related content that to your in industry that you can share also. You can set it set up with Feedly and share from Feedly and there's other ways, there are other tools to set up um, to automate sharing other people's content. So you don't have to th even think about that, set it and forget it. And you can create that content. Implement, engage, build a following, just do it. So in the beginning, if you're just starting from scratch, it's gonna take you a lot of sweat equity up front. It's gonna be about 90 minutes a day for the first 30 days as you start building and putting out your content and creating the content and getting out to social media. And that doesn't include Actually, it really doesn't include the, the creating the content, creating the content, depending on what you're creating, how long it's going to take you, but actually just getting the stuff onto the social media and monitoring it and getting used to everything. Figure in about 30 days, you're used to posting already, you're familiar with the whatever tools you're using, whatever platforms you're on. It should take you about 30 minutes a day to manage the social media with the tools. Okay, and um, and how else you want to monitor and measure monthly? Okay, look at your analytics, see what's working and not working. 
Okay, so usually you want to you want to do this like first or second day of the month to look at the prior month, and it's easier to put a month to month. So um, so then you can see and then you can plan. So in it, and and being in retailing, you also you want to plan for the seasons, the holidays that are coming up. Now I watch a lot of the uh, food competitions on on television, like Hell's Kitchen or, or Master Chef, and and somebody said this: Do your best. Just hope that your competition does a lesser job or makes a mistake. So it's it's not as simple as putting up a website and doing a few posts or ads on Facebook. It's complex. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. You take it one step at a time. But you got to watch, especially if you've got, um, you know, if you're, if you're not up against any of the big guys, um, uh, if you're very local, so you want to watch what, uh, what other people are posting, what are they doing? Um, and um, so, you know, the problem, and the problem is that uh, you have to be careful because, you know, one mistake and your reputation is blown, you know, for a while and it takes a lot to build it back up again. You know, so you just want to be careful with with that. Um, you know, stay positive on that. Um, stay neutral on whatever's going on in the world. So you don't want to, you know, uh, alienate somebody or another person. You know, but that's what that's that's one of the things you just want to be careful out there. Um, so it should not be overwhelming. So I can help you get noticed, increase visits to your websites. I can't guarantee specific numbers. No one can. Um, uh, and anyone who does is fooling you. Okay. There are no shortcuts. So we can start with a free 15 minute phone consultation. I'll give, I'll review your current marketing efforts and see how you can beat the competition together. Okay. So now we're going to open for questions and I'm going to swap my screens here to go live. So I need to switch. Okay, let's move all these over to the other side. Okay, questions, any questions? Okay, I see in the chat. Okay, it's over here. Um, business suites from Facebook. Actually, I'm going to show you that. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to show you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you that. How to how to see your. Uh, I'm going to, That's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so here is um, this is Feedly. Okay, so here's where you can subscribe to your competition's blogs. Um, even their YouTube channels and everything. This is free to use. They do have an upgraded version if you want more detailed stuff and everything, but I've been using this for, for free for ages. Um, so uh, you basically go here and um, you can get, um, hello. Okay, oops, there it goes. All right. So you can, you can add a website link. My connection is unstable. Oh, <laughs> okay. Like for instance, cybersecurity. So um, uh, here you get a lot of people. Even sometimes it's got a lot of stuff, you know. So um, you know. So for instance, you know, like I go and I just look at these every morning. So you'll get, like, these are, um, uh, you know, all the articles I I subscribe to, and um, you can actually, if you need to go back in there, okay, take a take a look. And they'll sort most pop, uh, popular yesterday and so forth. Um, so you can you can take a look. And uh, I this is how I keep up with industry news because it's, it's it's just crazy. And then so you can actually save articles into folders. You know, so if I see something, um, okay, I need to um, save this to um, to my SEO folder. You know, so I'll I'll just I'll just save it to the folder so I can read it later or use it later data or for an article or something else. So this is a really cool tool, saves a lot of time. You're not getting 500 emails a day subscribing, and then you don't get on your competitor's email list either. You know, so, um, so that's why I like, uh, I like this way of subscribing to blogs. All right, let's go over to Facebook. All right, so from Facebook, in Facebook, you're going to be in uh, on your page here. 
Okay, and then here is the meta business suite. Okay, so that's what this is. And I just lost that. Okay, hold on. Insights. Okay. Um, so, um, and here you can actually, if, when, once you connect your Instagram to your Facebook business page, you can actually monitor Instagram here too. Um, so you want to go to your insights. Okay. And let's just close this. Okay. Um, let's see. I found it yesterday because they moved it. All right. So benchmarking. Okay. Here it is. All right. So you go to insights. So you're in insights and you go to benchmarking. Okay, so here is where you can add other Facebook businesses that you want to follow. And, um, and they'll even suggest some in there. So all you need to do is to click add a business and start searching by the name of the of the business. It's cute. Um, so you'll see, okay, some of these like this is I mean, I don't even compete against these people anymore, because it's like, it's like crazy. Um, um, you know, and again, I go, you know, how am I different? So I'm not an agency, I'm a one-on-one -on -one consultant. So that makes it a little bit different than some, than, you know, than some of these other companies. Um, and then these, these have staff. Okay. So, I mean, these are actually where I get my articles to share. Um, and so, so you can see here and you'll get information. Uh, you can go to their Facebook page and actually see how many they post. Um, and how their page likes are up or down, how many, how much content they published. Um, and then here you can say in the last, in the last days, um, and I don't know why that's not letting me change that, or maybe not. So you get the last 28 days. And sometimes this will happen when you're looking for the prior month. Sometimes they'll let you pick last month. Sometimes you'll get 28 days, which will overlap in, you know, Jan, so it's overlapping into February. Um, but here, so here you can go actually go to their, the, their Facebook page and, um, and see what they're posting. Okay. So, um, uh, and, okay. Some, okay. This is, this is a meme. Okay. This is a funny, a funny story. Okay. A funny picture. So you see, they're not all pasting. Uh, well, they've got a lot of articles, so they post articles. So you can do, you can do, um, you know, so, so and again, they've got a lot of, um, Oh my, Twitter blue subscribers can now post tweets up to 4,000 characters long. Okay, is it worth it? I don't know, is Twitter blue worth it? Okay, so I'm gonna do a Twitter video soon. I am you know, gathering information, okay? But this, that's a, an interesting one. So that is the meta business suite. I, am, I don't have time to get into their paid advertising. Um, and really, I don't do paid advertising, so I uh, I've only done it a few times for people, and um, uh, I rather recommend you to somebody who specializes on that. So I, I specialize in organic stuff. Okay, over on LinkedIn. Okay, so on LinkedIn, so this is my business page. So if you do not have a business page on LinkedIn, you need to go here and go to work, and then go down here and create a company page, and just follow the steps to create your company page. And I have a LinkedIn video that um, uh, that I did that you can go to my um, close all these um, to my YouTube channel to check them out. Okay, so here you want to go. Let me go back to admin. Okay, so you can always what, what I'm going to share like a, a post. I want to reshare it to my personal uh, uh, feed. You want to view it as a member, so that here, so I can go to the events and then sh and then share it, or um, or share a post. And they don't even have share here; they have repost, so it looks different. Okay, yes, it share it shows repost now. Send is you want to send it to somebody, right? So they've got that ability also for you uh, for you to do that if you want to send it to somebody. Uh, all right, so let me go view as admin. Okay, so. I don't remember what it was. Here we go. Okay. Analytics competitors. Okay. So here um, you want to, uh, so here's your page. Okay. So you can put your page will come up first and then you can add people to it. So um, total engagement, uh, trending competitor posts. Okay. And so, and so, yeah, so this is, so this is how, this is how you do it, you know, so 
Um, you click on edit competitors and you can just search um, by name and, um, and add your competitors here. Um, now, LinkedIn is a little bit different than Facebook. Um, and here again, you can see, okay, custom last 30 days. You know, so, um, and this one, they even allow you to, to export it. So, you know, so you can, you can, um, uh, again, check and, you know, watch your competitors and what they're doing here and how much they're interacting with, with people. Okay, over on Twitter. Okay, so on Twitter, you want to go to this. I'm going to show you two ways to do it on Twitter, on more and lists. So here you're going to um, create a list, okay? And then you can also um, share lists. So I already have my list of social media pros. So I actually also share, use this to share their content. So you can, um, you can add people to, to lists um, by going to somebody's profile and then you click on their, their link. You wanna click on the three dots and it says add or, add, um, add or remove from lists. Okay, so you can add them to lists. You can have them in multiple lists. Okay, so how, how is an easy way to, monitor, to, to view all these lists? Using TweetDeck. Okay, TweetDeck, uh, it's simple. It's tweetdeck.twitter.com. Um, um, so it's a free tool by Twitter for Twitter. And um, so for instance, here is uh, my social media pro. So this is a list. And this one here is a search for small business. Okay, so, um, so you can see the posts that, 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 people, that people post on here. So this also helps me, also, this also helps when you're looking for other content to share besides your own. That's not a competitor, like some industry news or, 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 or something else. You know, you can, you can share it this way also, just so people see that you're sharing other people's content. And the, the thing too with sharing other people's content is they're notified. So they can see, especially on Twitter, and people usually thank people for sharing content, especially if you're trying to build your following on Twitter, that's a good, that's a good thing to do on, you know, on that, um, to, to help you do that. And, you know, and then here's following a hashtag. So, um, um, like for instance, I was working with somebody we were doing, they were, they were pushing kindness. So I, I had be kind, um, kindness matters. So I followed those generic hashtags to get, um, um, you know, other ideas for other hashtags. So, um, so this is another way to get ideas for hashtags too, to see what people are posting. This helped me too. I was working with a, um, a company that did positive parenting videos and, and uh, webinars online, uh, classes online. So um, hashtag positive parenting was the um, was the key the, you know, the key hashtag. So I actually I wanted to find mom bloggers. So um, and this is a good way to find referral sources who um, and influencers. So in that case, I was looking for. In fact, I still have that mom blogger list here. If I didn't. Uh, lists that I saw it. Yep, mom bloggers here for revive families. So, so this is a list I I created for them. So, um, so this is uh, this is this is the client, and if I want to go to the mom blogger list, okay. So these are all the mom bloggers. So these are like twenty, tw just twenty with uh, with all the mom bloggers here. So I can see to what, you know, hashtag positivity, um, uh, parent, hashtag parenting, hashtag kids. See, those are generic hashtags. Um, uh, hashtag motivation, uh, work-life balance, time management. Okay, those are, um, and this is, <laughs> this is actually a great graphic. I like this. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to bookmark that. Okay. Um, uh, okay, here's, here's a kindness one. See, this is kind of kind of generic. Somebody else created. Oh, this is she created this. Okay, so so this is this is a graphic. She may have probably created it on uh, Canva using Canva. So um, you know, kindness kindness matters. Um, and she posts regularly. So she posts like every. So this is you see seven hours, five hours ago. This is she posts every hour. 
say, oh my God, that's too much. Well, yeah, um, you may not do that you know, in the beginning, but there are other tools to use to automate um, posting. Okay, any other questions? Thank you for watching. If this video helped you, please like it and subscribe to her channel. Then, click on over to the AZ Social Media Wiz website to download the free Define Your Target Market Workbook or schedule a free 15-minute phone consultation and review of your marketing efforts.